Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you. Welcome to this time of worship with Plymouth Church, the Jazz and Justice Church. I'm Reverend Marjorie Matthews, and I'm blessed to serve as the pastor of this wonderful congregation. It's a joy to be back with all of you after my week of rest after Easter Sunday. I wanna thank Reverend Marty and everyone who stepped in to lead and to help while I was away. Thank you and bless you all. Today is the third Sunday in the season of Easter, the third Sunday in this season when we celebrate resurrection, when we give our attention to what is rising and renewing in ourselves and in the world, when we reflect on the things which cannot be extinguished, that which cannot be dampened or put out, even, even as we grieve the ongoing losses and the ongoing violence, as we pray for the people of Indianapolis, as we pray for the families and friends of Dante Wright and young Adam Toledo and so, so many others. We, we come together in this Easter season, dear ones, and we remember generations of faithful believers, those who came before us and how, how they leaned into the power of God in good times and in bad, leaned into the love of God, trusting and believing in God to make a way out of no way, proclaiming God's faithfulness. So that's, that's where we're going to begin this morning. Dave Mayotki is going to lead us in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We're all going to keep our audio muted, but we can sing loud and proud from our own homes with our audio muted. And so if you want to sing, the lyrics are in your bulletin and we'll also post them in the chat box here on Zoom. Are we ready to worship God? Amen. Come, let us worship God and let us begin in song. Dave, will you lead us, please? Thanks, Marjorie. <laughs> They fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, the mercies I see. morning everyone we are now going to continue with prayer i will open the i will offer the opening prayer and pastor marjorie will lead our centering moment so i invite you to settle into whatever prayer position works for you if you want to close your eyes or bow your head or just take a moment and breathe deeply center yourself let yourself arrive fully for this time of worship Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, time and time again, we hear and claim the words, great is thy faithfulness. Your divine presence that illuminates each shadow in compassion and mercy. Today, let us feel this presence anew, God. Stand with us, amongst us, and let us trust your blessing 
of peace. Let this time of worship draw us closer to you in refuge and in justice. And may our worship together always remind us of the sacred and grounding words of the psalmist who reminds us that you are you. And I invite you all to join Pastor Marjorie now in the words of Psalm 46, repeating each line. So dear ones, continuing now, I invite you to say each line of this short piece of Psalm 46 after me. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Amen. And now let's go over to Shell and Stephen, who are going to lead us in our congregational song. What a fellowship. Good morning. You right. ready? What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What? Have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms? I have blessed peace with my Savior dear, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from. All along, I'm leaning on Jesus, trusting my Savior, leaning on the everlasting arms. Do that last part again. Leaning on Jesus, trusting my Savior, safe and secure from all along. Leaning on Jesus, trusting my Savior. Leaning on the everlasting arms. <laughs> that was fun. I love y'all. We love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Shell and Stephen. What a fellowship. Leaning indeed. Oh, thank you for leading us in that joyous congregational song. I love seeing the little, like, everyone's, like, bopping in their little boxes, you know? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Well, we have come to the moment now in our time of worship where we pass the peace to each other. Please join me as we claim anew those words that are so precious to us in our denomination, the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And in that spirit of welcome, I invite you to pass the peace first to yourself, laying a gentle hand on yourself and saying, peace be with me. And now I invite you to pass the peace to everyone who's joined this time of worship, extending your hands and saying, peace be with you.
And if you're worshiping with us for the first or second time, I'd like to extend a special warm welcome to you on behalf of all of your Plymouth family. We have a digital welcome card you can fill out if you are interested in being contacted by our pastoral staff or just if you have any questions. And I know the link went in there already and, and so, uh, and maybe we could post it right now just so everyone doesn't have to scroll up or down as well. Um, and now in a second, we'll be sent off to our small groups to check in, our small breakout groups to connect for a couple minutes and pass the peace to one another. Um, and then we'll come back to continue worship together as a group as well. So welcome, we're so glad you're here. Welcome back everyone. Are we all back from passing the peace? I hope everyone was blessed by that time. Hey, I see my friends Diana and Jeff Chaffetz. Hey, you two. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. I was just lit up with joy at the sight of two dear friends. So everyone, we're going to go to our dear sister Carolyn Ellison now, who's going to share grace notes with us. Carolyn. Well, good Sunday, Plymouth family and friends. And I uh, come with a reminder to those of us who have been meeting for conversations around racial justice and reparations to remind you that we'll be meeting for the fourth session today at 2 p.m. And we look forward to seeing all of you. Um, there will be a link. There is a link in the bulletin and there will also be the link in the chat room so that you'll be able to come in at two o'clock. Thank you and God bless. Amen, thank you, Carolyn. Shell and Stephen. Making technical difficulties. We didn't tell anyone we were singing next. It was a surprise. Okay, here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Dear Plymouth family, it's always a pleasure to be with you in communion with you. You are my mother church and I am very blessed uh, to lead this time of prayer. And before we go into it, I wanna ask you to connect with the rhythm of your breathing by breathing with me three times, inhaling really deep and then Exhaling very slowly. So let's do it together. In and slowly, slowly, slowly. Now let it go out. One more time. And slowly, slowly, let it go out. Let's do it one more time. And breathing, we remember the gift of life and what a privilege it is to be able to breathe in and out. I want to hear from you both out loud uh, by opening your microphones when, when you decide to talk or in the chat 
the prayers of gratitude or the prayers you want to bring to the altar of our divine presence so that I can lift them up in prayer. So this is the time, dear siblings, for you to open your microphones and let me know what is in your hearts and minds. Oh, beloved, the children of Hoover came back, the kindergarten to second graders last week, third to fifth graders this upcoming week. Be with them and help them not be discouraged if they are behind or struggling. Hold them and the teachers in your hands as they transition to try to study again together. Thank you for all they give to the world and be with them. Thank you, Stephen. I would like, I would like to uh, have a prayer for my daughter Lisa, who teaches in the Oakland School District, and for their safety, the safety of all the children and all the teachers in the schools as well. Thank this to God, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I need to repeat. Oh. We, I got you for your daughter, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Yes. I'd like to pray uh, for um, Richard Isom, who has COVID and now it's severe. And yesterday he was put on a vent. So I'd like to lift him up and his family. Richard Isaac. Thank you. Oh, dear Lord, um, it's been a, a challenging week for me. I lost my friend of 52 years, Howard Ingram, who died suddenly from a heart attack. And two other close friends of mine are in serious conditions in the hospital. Please ask for guidance for healing for Denise Perrier and Bobby Cochran. Thank you. Yes. Maybe. I would like to ask a prayer to have a more forgiving spirit and to um, practice what I preach in terms of Christianity to actually forgive others their debts as I want to be forgiven. As I know, I don't always practice that and um, I'm praying to do better. We will pray for compassion for ourselves and others. Yes. Maybe two more people, two additional spoken prayers, and then we'll go into a time of prayer. Dear God, I pray for our friend David Sturdivant, who had all of this equipment stolen from his car and yes. his car stolen and his life was threatened. And I just ask you, keep your hand on him and somehow miraculously return this equipment or help him to replace it. And thank you for saving his life and thank you for your protection. Thank you. Rena, I'd like to have prayers for our immigrant family who go to their amnesty hearing this Thursday, let us pray that they can remain. Yeah, we will pray for them. All right. So if you want to now, and I, I'm reading prayers in the chat as well, and whatever prayer, having surgery on Thursday, okay, uh, will be placed also in my altar. Um, to continue praying for these prayers that were brought, brought up. Let us pray. Amante Dios, bendito Dios. Dios sin nombres, Dios sin fronteras, 
beloved God, a God without borders, a God of many names, a genderless God. We thank you for your presence in our lives, for your powerful, powerful divinity that is with us in every breath, in every moment, and is the sole provider of the peace that we get to feel in our hearts. We thank you, God, for your love and presence. And we come to you in humility, knowing that we are humans, limited, limited in our faith, limited in the ability to make things happen. But we come to your altar knowing that you are all powerful, and that you can make miracles happen. In the lives of those who are still suffering with COVID, who are in ventilators, who are still suffering for the loss of the dear ones, the family of Mariana Soto, and dear ones that this cruel disease is still affecting. We ask you, dear God, for the friends of David who are sick and we ask you for David for the traumatic event that happened to him and thank you for covering him with your grace and allowing him to preserve his life. We ask you dear God for the many immigrants facing court hearings and facing the effects of the devastation of conditions in their home countries, conditions of safety and livelihood. We ask you, dear God, so that we can open borders, we can open our hearts because your earth is vast to give us all, to give us all a piece of justice. Dear God, we also ask you for those who are about to go into surgery, for those with pending treatments, so that you accompany them and they can feel your presence and your grace as they go through those times of medical treatment. Bendito Dios, te amamos, we love you, dear God, for being so real in our lives. We thank you for the wonders that you will do and for the peace you will bring to accept your will. And we pray the Lord's prayer as you taught your disciples. Our creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Got 
has come to you. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b through 43. Hear now these words. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why did doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Here ends the reading. to the people all oh, alleluia and the words are words of wisdom Sometime in July of 2006, my friends, sometime in July of 2006, not long after my dearest friend, Akiyu, died, I had a vivid dream about her. In the dream, I was standing in the family room of my grandmother's house doing, I don't know what, puttering, straightening, the things I am wont to do. I turned around and there stood Akiyu, wearing her favorite silk blouse and slacks. Stunned, I, I pressed my hand to my chest and spoke her name in an astonished whisper, Akiyu, what are you doing here? And she, she held out her hand to me and she said, it's okay, Marjorie, I didn't die. I sputtered in confusion, then, then where have you been? We've all been a mess, missing you. And she said it again and then again, it's okay, Marjorie, I didn't die. Somehow we ended up sitting together side by side on the couch, talking for I know not how long. And eventually I woke from the dream. And I woke knowing deep in my soul two seemingly contradictory things. Knowing first of all that yes, my dearest friend was dead, but knowing also the deep truth of what she had spoken to me in that dream, that she had not died, that she would never die. Because love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. In today's scripture, Jesus just appears from out of nowhere just appears among his friends, still wearing the marks of his crucifixion on his hands and feet, but assuring them, it's okay, I didn't die, 
I'm not a ghost, it's really me. And to further prove his point, he does something that a ghost probably would not do. He eats a piece of fish. Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. I know this, I know this for a fact. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in this very church. You know, yesterday would have been the 103rd birthday of Jean Lindborg, who for many years was the oldest member of our church. And we still tell her stories, still lift her name, still invoke her presence. Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. There is no doubt someone you love who is gone from this life, but whose memory you keep, whose name you lift up, whose stories you tell, whose presence you invoke. I know this for a fact because many of you have shared with me your loved one's stories. And even if I wasn't blessed to know them firsthand, I keep their names on my altar. I retell their stories to other people. I quote their witty sayings and words of wisdom. Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. There's a, a biblical scholar who put it this way. He said, the proof that God raised Jesus from the dead is not the empty tomb, but the full hearts of his disciples. The crowning evidence that Jesus lives is not a vacant grave, but a spirit-filled fellowship, not a rolled away stone, but a carried away church. Don't you just love that? I want folks to say that about us, that we are card carrying members of a carried away church, a church that's just carried away, just all caught up in the spirit of love and the spirit of justice. And you know, speaking of churches carried away in the spirit of love and justice, the pastor of our sister church in Minneapolis, the Reverend Dr. Dwayne Davis of Plymouth Church, yes, Plymouth Church in Minneapolis, recently joined a demonstration, a prayer vigil, a protest in support of Black lives. And he reminded all those who'd gathered that this Easter season, this Easter tide, as we call it, is about resurrection. And resurrection is about uprising. Easter is about getting up. Speaking to those who robbed the life of George Floyd, he said, we're not gonna let you put your knee on our neck and not remember it. We're not gonna let you take our brother away from us and then forget about it. We're not gonna forget to say his name and every time you see us, you're gonna hear us say it again. And it occurred to me that's precisely what Jesus' followers, his friends and disciples, the ones who established the first churches, those carried away churches, that's precisely what they said and did. They told the Roman Empire, we're not going to let you crucify our Jesus and not remember it. We're not going to let you take him away from us and then forget about it. We're not going to forget to say his name. And every time you see us, you're going to hear us say it again. And they kept saying his name and kept saying his name and kept saying his name. And here we are 2,000 years later still saying his name because love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. Will you say that with me? Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. Love keeps alive those whose bodies have left us. Love keeps alive. Thanks be to God. Amen. About a year ago, 
I went looking for a church. And, and the spirit I brought to that was honestly a spirit of compromise. I knew that all institutions, even churches, are imperfect. And I got myself ready to compromise on something I cared about to be part of a church again. But at Plymouth, instead of compromise, what I found was abundance. Abundant music and art, abundant faith, abundant conviction, even abundant humor and kindness in a difficult year. I know that this abundance didn't come out of nowhere. It was built here by all of you and by those before you who gave generously of your time, your care, and your financial resources. So I give to Plymouth out of gratitude for those who built Ply the Plymouth I know, and I give and hope for the next person like me who I know will find the abundance I found and more. Uh, there are four ways to give to the church. You can use PayPal, you can use the Give Plus app, you can mail a check to the church office if you like to do it the old fashioned way, uh, or my favorite, you can give on the website, PlymouthOakland.org. I set up a, a recurring donation, which works great, and you don't have to think about it. Um, so thank you, Plymouth, for making it so easy, and thank you, all of you, for giving generously. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May God's peace abide with you. May God's illuminate your heart now and forever more. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to close this time of worship, I want to thank all of you for bringing your beautiful spirits to this Sunday, to this time of worship. Worship is what we weave together. So thank you for being part of helping to weave this Sunday service together. Thank you to all of our worship leaders and thank you to our Zoom hosts. If we can pour out some love for Ashley Hill and for Linda Coyston in our Zoom host, will you join me please in thanking them? Emily, I'm so moved by your beautiful words. Praise God. Praise God for guiding you here. Praise God that you didn't have to compromise. And so in the spirit of abundance and gratitude that Emily named, in the spirit of knowing that it's a, it's a wonderful world, it's a beautiful world, it's a broken world. There are losses along the way, we all know this. And there is such love. So may you go from this time of worship, knowing that you are held, surrounded, enfolded, uplifted with love. Go in peace, dear ones. God bless you all. For those who are able to stay for our virtual coffee hour, we're going to go off to visit in small groups for coffee hour. And then if you're able to come back after coffee hour, Dave Mayotki is going to bless us with one more song and then we will, we will close this time together. But for now, blessings to you all. They're coming back, so good. All right. Welcome back. Hi, everybody. Hey. Welcome back. Hi. Thank you, Ashley and Linda. <laughs> we had a short coffee hour this time. <laughs> it felt a little bit shorter, but it was good. It was good. It's such a lovely day out. And I know that there are several folks among us who have afternoon plans. So, so a short coffee hour was a good thing. So thank you everyone for coming back. I hope you were blessed by that time in small groups. Dave Mayaki, what are you, what are you gonna play for us? Well, um, 
I, I uh, decided it hit me because of this greenery that's all around us. Uh, we've had all these flowers blossoming over the last few weeks. <coughs> now the roses are, it, it's like uh, Maria Callas entering the stage at La Scala for her big aria. You know, this, these are the roses. <laughs> they are just fantastic. So um, I'd like to do a Rogers and Hart song. And I looked it up. It's from 1926. Uh, a show called the Garrick Gaieties. Uh, I think this happened, it's sort of like the Ziegfeld Follies, you know, it would happen every year, a new version. And uh, so this song is, uh, if it was following their hit from the previous year called Manhattan. I'll take Manhattan, the Bronx and Staten Island too, which hit the world, took the world by storm. So here's one about spring. And... Uh, <laughs> On the first of May, it is moving day. Spring is here, so blow your job, throw that job away. Now's the time to trust to your wanderlust. In the city's dust, you wait, must you wait, just you wait. In a mountain greenery where God paints the scenery, just two crazy people together. How oh, you love your lover, let blue skies be your coverlet. And when it rains, we'll laugh at the weather. And if you're good, I'll search for wood so you can cook while I stand looking. Beans could get no keener reception in a beanery. Bless that mountain greenery home. <laughs> Blue skies be our cover. When it rains, we'll laugh at the weather. Mosquitoes here won't bite you, dear. I'll let them sting me on the finger. He's good at no keener reception in a beanery. Bless that mountain greenery. Where God takes the scenery. Bless that mountain greenery. That was fabulous. Thank you, Dave. That was so joyful. And we got to see Rachel and Bridget dancing together oh. too, which which I, added to the joy. I love that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, so everyone, unmute your audio. We're going to be loud and rock us for just a minute and shout your hellos to whomever you want to shout <laughs> <your> hello to. Hello. Oh, Oh. Marjorie, Marjorie, Marjorie. Hey. <laughs> Rachel, Bridget. All right, so we're going to remute everyone. Linda and Ashley, we can remute everyone. Just go on do it. Oh. Let's see your wife. You can tell if you got picked up. Are you going to remute? I will. Hey. We're going to count down now. I hope everyone will get out and enjoy the rest of this lovely Sunday. And then for those who are coming to the racial justice and reparations meeting, we'll look forward to seeing you at two o'clock. But for now, we'll count down from five, four, three, two, one. Mwah! God bless you all. 
Have a blessed week.